Welcome to DS Trucks. My name is Sean. This is my 2020 F450. This is our snow plow setup. It's a Fisher XLS 8 to 10 foot blade and our 2020 F450 6.7 power stroke. But in today's video, we are going to be working on this truck. We actually have a problem with our headlights. The low beams, for some strange reason, the low beams are not working. So we're going to be trying to figure it out. I have really no answer for why it's not working but i'm gonna be doing some probing some digging to figure out see if i can figure out what's going on but let me show you what happens guys when we turn on our brights if we were to turn on our brights then we actually do we do have brights we do have brights so we just don't have low beams now i've already isolated the issue down to the truck i switched to our other truck our 2019 f-250 and the headlights function normally with the f-250 but uh, when I put the other plow on the F450, the headlight issue seems to follow the F450 around. So we're going to take this truck inside the garage here and we're going to see if we can figure out what's going on with this plow setup. Anyway, see you guys inside the garage. All right, so here we are in the garage. And my solution for not being able to fit the truck in the garage is to just use tarps to kind of block the way. Now, we are going to be removing the fender liner and that is where all of our snowplow stuff is on this 2020 f450 with led lights now depending on the year of your truck depending on if you have led lights or not it might be a little bit different of an interface but for the 2020s i believe ford started to incorporate a snowplow connection junction connection point right here underneath this fender making the install relatively easy where you just remove the fender liner and uh, you are able to uh, go ahead and to do all your snowplow install from there. Now we are going to uh, be removing our fender liner, but because this is an F450, we are going to be removing our fender flares as well. And there is a little bit of trick to that in order to make sure you do not damage your paint. And when I first, I've done this before, and then when I first did this fender flare removal, I actually, when I reinstalled it, there was a little bit more of a gap after removing it. And I attribute that to not taking enough time to actually warm up the fender flare. So this time, I'm actually letting this heater kind of focus its heat right on this fender flare because it is cold outside. It's like 30 degrees outside. It's freezing out. And if I don't warm this up first, then... I can have issues removing it so once I get this off hopefully I can kind of play with it a little bit and adjust it so that that gap it's not noticeable by anybody but me but it, uh, hopefully I can adjust this so that this gap is not showing but basically to remove this uh, you have to take off your mud flap you got screws uh, down here which we have to grab a light so you can see that but you've got screws holding your mud flap on you got to remove that we've got push pins in here that you're going to end up having to remove and then there's uh, I believe that's it but once we get in there we'll really see but I believe that's it once you get this fender flare off then you can go ahead and start working on the other components but let's go ahead and get this fender flare off of the truck all right so number one I'm going to go ahead and remove this mud flap I think the I think it's just three screws here so we're just going to pop these three out using a ratchet there's actually a screw right here and a push pin that needs to be removed right there. All right, so mud flap off. Next step, fender flare. And to get the fender flare, first thing to do, push pins. So you got one, two, three, four, it looks like. Let's go ahead and get those off. We do have a push pin puller. We have a little kit that we've uh, got from Amazon. Just a normal, cheap little kit from Amazon. Let's go ahead and get this off. All right, so those four push pins are out. They are removed, and they are the two-piece style. So you got to pull the top part out, and then it will release. And from there, we just got to work this thing off. Now, as I said before, I pulled this into the warm garage. I raised the temperature up to 60 degrees for about 30 minutes, and I also focused some heat on this unit. Now, I could also get a heat gun if I wanted to, saying far far away from it not getting close and thinning the paint or anything like that but just take a heat gun uh and just just warm this up a little um i'm gonna go for it it's just gonna take it and work it loose here a little um grabbing up by the bottom right now 
Oh, there she goes, man. Warming it up really did help, it seems. And, oh, okay, pulling away. It's coming apart a little better than it did the first time I did this. Well, I did it cold and that wasn't good. Working it loose, coming down here. And did I get everything? Is there anything? Oh, there's a screw down here. There is a screw down here, let's see. Oh, there is, okay. Let me grab that screw real quick before I go any further. And I'll take that loose. Now we should be able to take her off. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so with this off, you can see that the fender flare gets quite dirty. So yeah, I'm actually gonna set this down somewhere. You gotta be cognizant of the fact that this is a painted piece of material. So you can't just lay it down on the ground. You actually gotta set it down somewhere nice. And that is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm putting it here on this drop cloth so it doesn't get destroyed while we're working on the truck. Anyway, see you guys at the next scene. All right, so fender flare off, and now to the, for the fender liner. Now this truck has plastic wheel 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 liners, so there's plastic, and then there's claw, and then there's that material. I don't know what it is, but it is possible to. Uh, I do believe you have to remove both of them separately, plastic one first, and another one after. To remove the plastic one, I believe we just have some screws here up front on the lip, just like one here, one, two three you just got to fill up here for them maybe four they're a weird size they're a 5.5 millimeters so it's kind of weird and then over here let's get some light in here we've got a screw right here that we've got to remove and we have some clips right here to remove one there and one there so we're going to go ahead and do that and i'll touch base with once that's done all right, so I've got all the screws out and I'm gonna try to finesse this thing out of here. So yeah, pushing it in up around the shock tower and just and just working it in and just kind of pushing up here to get it up around the shock tower good so that it can go back and now it can come out. So actually not that hard. And this is a added part, you know, it's a fender liner plastic. I would highly recommend this um, as a protective measure. It uh, pretty much just ensures that moisture isn't getting up in your wells. I mean, you do have this. You do have this material, but how good is that material going to be by itself? So uh, now we do have to remove this. And what we have here is a couple of push pins. So you've got push pin there, push pin there. Now these are actually holding the wiring harness up. There's push pins all over. So the wiring harness just kind of locates itself on this. And this is why that fender liner is so important because it seems as if just with this material on the Super Duty, with all the things that it goes through, the mud, the salt, the snow, seems like this material was not enough. And there's holes where the wiring is being held, where the screws are, where the plastic one does not really have the holes. So anyway, we're going to push these uh, push pins up and we're gonna actually take this off. There's a little clip there, there's a little holding tab clip thing right there that we've gotta take off. So basically just thread that out and uh, getting any more of those out, there's one here as well. And just looking around, if I forget something, I'll let you know, but I think that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and get this out. There is a 10 milli up in here. It's kinda hard to see, but it's in there. There we go. All right, so now that I've got this fender liner down, you can kind of see everything going on in here. You can see that these push pins are going through the liner and they are wiring harnesses. So you've, if you can imagine all your salt and grime, if you don't have that plastic liner, it's going to be going, hitting this and hitting this push pin connector and going right by main wiring harnesses so 
right, main wiring, main wiring harnesses, connectors. So you can see inside of mine that there's no green, there's no salt, there's no nothing because I do have the plastic liners. So here we go. Let's go ahead and pull this out and get these push pins out of here so that this thing can come out of here. All right, so as far as the headlights not working on the plow, the reason I pulled the fender flare, fender liner, all this stuff is to get a look at the connections that are under here. And I'm gonna wiggle test these. I'm gonna try to turn on the headlights and just wiggle on these and see if one of these connectors is the problem. I did see online that sometimes there's problems with these connectors. Uh, the fuse, this, this little fuse connector is kind of goofy. It's underneath here and you cannot access this. It's on a too short of a it's on a too short of a uh, wire loom for it to be routed that you were to a spot where you can see it. But there's these wiring plugs that are everywhere. Why this all can't just be one piece is beyond me, but you've got like a plug in here that can be wiggle tested to see if there's any shorts in the plugs. I don't see any issues with any of the wiring but maybe somehow some way there's a problem with some wiring i don't know i just i can't explain why my headlights on my plow don't work but um you can see the other relays involved with the system they are here and they are zip tied up in here and i don't see any problems with these i mean what what's going on i don't know i don't i don't know but anyway, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can't figure out something here with this uh, plow, with these plow headlights. All right, guys. So I think I figured out what the problem is. Now, if you have a snow plow, a Fisher, a Boss, or anything like that, this video might help you. So what I did is I actually. I did go a little crazy and take everything apart and I'm probing the wires and I'm trying to figure out why I'm not getting headlight. Why am I not getting the headlights to turn on? Why don't I have headlights? So I was about to, I don't know, cut my wire open here to probe it. But I said, you know what? Let me probe some stuff over here. And I actually exposed a little bit of that section of wire over here underneath the fender cover where... It never gets wet, it never gets salt, never gets any weather. So, but I, I will end up taping this back up real good. But I found that there is no power even here. There's no power to the headlights coming even through here through the black wire with a white stripe. So I traced that wire and I did look online for a pin out and what color wire is for the headlights. And I traced that wire and that bundle goes all the way up here to this relay. So couple things either the relay itself is bad or the module itself down in here is bad so we're gonna have to figure that out but for whatever reason this relay is not clicking that one right there it looks like it gives the power to both the headlights um, but yeah both headlights are on with the black wire and I do believe that is because once this black wire is triggered i believe it triggers this other side as well as you can hear there's a little audible clicking and i believe it's because once one gets activated this one gets activated as well so why that is it could be there's a jump wire between the two relays which is probably why the black the other wire for the other headlight is just solid black and that's right here so when one of them gets tripped, it looks like the other one gets tripped. So that's why both headlights are on, I, I believe. But I wish I would have kind of known this before. Kind of just, I. it's been a long time since I've worked on vehicles and stuff and really messed with relays. And honestly, older vehicles, you'd have to mess with relays and stuff a lot more. But I think the best thing to do would just be to look at your relay first before you tear anything down and jump the relay just to confirm that the headlight harness or that your snowplow harness is good because I was told by the snowplow company that hey nine times out of ten you need to buy a new harness you need to buy a new harness and that might be true if it's just a relay because when you buy the harness you're buying all the relays so it's just good to really check your relay so 
with the checking of this relay, I can apply voltage to it, and I can actually check to see if it's actually making a connection. The pro the mistake that I made is I by by checking these relays, what I actually did is I just switched them all around real fast. So I've actually switched the position of all three of these relays because they are the same, and use that as a way to rule out the possible issues with the relay. Well, the issue is, um, the the issue that I have now is. I'm pretty f pretty sure it's not a relay because, like I say, we've ruled that out as an issue because we switched them all around and still had the same issue. I'm pretty sure our issue is going to be our module. For some reason, our three-port Western module is not powering our headlights for our snowplow. So it has to be that. I knew it was kind of weird for it to be a whole wire harness because there's nothing really in a wire harness that does anything but they give me one second all right that's it and that's that the headlights are now working i do not have to use the high beams anymore the regular headlights are working and it turned out to just be the isolation module now i am a little bit disappointed in myself for not being able to find it out quicker i did pull the fender liner and all that stuff but it ended up costing me extra time but at the end of the day, I did figure it out, and I didn't just go with what the plow place was telling me. What they told me is you need to replace the harness. You need to replace the harness. And I'm glad I didn't because the harness cost like $250, and nobody had it in stock. I would have had to order this harness. I would have had to wait. And then even t just taking the fender liner off to actually replace the harness is rerouting all the plugs, rerouting this plug here, all this soft start relays and stuff that are underneath here it would have been a nightmare and i just couldn't figure out how my install that i did last year was causing this i mean everything that i could find wiggle testing all the plugs everything with the harness just didn't point to a harness what i ended up doing is just tracing it back looking up at a diagram though the the color of the high beam circuit and i went up and i ended up probing this harness all the way back to see if the, if my harness is bad than where and they said nine times out of ten it's the harness and all the western dealers that i called all the fisher dealers that i called are like convinced that their modules don't go bad their modules don't go bad that's what they kept preaching that their modules don't go bad well the three-point module in this case went bad it was doing all kinds of funky stuff it was turning on one headlight it was leaving one headlight on a truck on no low beams no matter what no low beams and it was clicking you could hear the module clicking but it just wasn't making the connection to fire the relay to turn on the uh to turn on the uh high beam so what i did i probed all the way back all the way back once i traced the wire i traced that wire back and it and it took me all the way backward all the way to this center relay right here the headlights went all the way to the center relay so basically these three relays i believe they control your headlights i don't think park i don't know but it definitely controls your headlights and your high beams using two of them so when you turn on your high beams it actually turns off your low beams for whatever reason but it turns off your low beams and it um you know i don't know why it does that but it turns off your low beams and then using the module so the module wasn't firing the relay the module wasn't firing the relay so when i actually went to pick up this three point mo three port module which is actually located down in here on top of your fuse box this is per do you see it says module three port it's per Fisher Western installation instructions, and it makes it real difficult, almost impossible to get to your fuse box. You dang near got to take the battery out to get to your fuse box, maybe even a battery tray. Um, but it is what it is. I, I kind of wish they used a different location other than that. You probably could, uh, you probably, after all said and done, you probably could get it to fit down in this area somewhere so you could just not see it. Because it really is not something that should ever get serviced. You know, all this stuff, you know, in hindsight could technically be rerouted. But it is nice to have your relays right here up top. So that's one thing you might just want to keep up top. I reattached it. But I say I'm disappointed in myself because 
what I ended up doing is taking the circuit where I traced the low beam uh, wire to. I ended up taking that circuit and I ended up jumping the circuit with a little wire. I think I threw it out. Oh, here it is. A little jump wire just like this. Basically completing the circuit, bypassing the relay and everything. So jumping that circuit across like this, I was able to see that, no, my circuit was good. My wiring was good going all the way from through here and all the way through here, all the way to the light. I was able to turn on my headlights by jumping the circuit. So my headlights, my, my wiring harness is, is good. Um, my wiring harness is good. So all that said and done, all of that messing around, my, my day, pretty much my day, I could have had this all fixed yesterday when I was initially messing with this. I initially started off by just unplugging the, all these relays and switching them around as a means to rule out the relays as an issue. But what I should have done is from the start ruled out even t ruled out even removing all of this, removing any of this and just checking all that, checking all connectors, plugging this in and getting the actual circuit to rule out the I, any possibility of it being the wiring harness so my fault cost me a little extra time but i did gain knowledge i did gain some diag ability when it comes to this it's unfortunate that i even poked a wire you don't want to have that on your conscience but i covered up anywhere where i poked any wires best of my abilities hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt me in in the future but everything stays pretty dry in here so if it does come back, I guess I'll have to fix that wire. But, you know, small little pinholes should be fine. But, you know, I, I had to figure it out. If I would have, in hindsight, if I were able to just come in here and just check this relay with the jump wire to rule that out, to understand that, hey, this module is not working, that would have been ideal. But if, there's a, if there is a silver lining... I was able to make an adjustment to my fender flare, which had a little needed a little adjustment last time I went in here. Uh, the, one of the plastic tabs. I wish I would have just did it when I when it happened, but I was so busy and I didn't have time. But just a little adjustment on one of the plastic tabs and made a slight gap here. But now that is no more. It looks perfect because I made that adjustment. So that got done, and I've gotten quicker at removing the wheel liner. Now that I've done it twice. So anyway, guys, that's it for the video. This is DS Trucks. See you guys in the next video. Over and out. Oh, before I go, what would you guys like to see? One thing I want to do is I want to figure out how to get the halos to actually turn on while I'm plowing. And I think what I should do is when the module comes in, it turns off your headlights for the truck and it allows the plow headlights to turn on. What if I figured out how to get the halos to turn back on because it cuts everything off. If I could figure out the communication land wire for the halos, I could actually just bypass that through the circuit, through the module, and I could get it so that it will turn on the halos. When the plow switch is over, Instead of switching the halo section of the headlights over, it could switch. It could keep that. It could keep that lit. It would be cool if the headlights stayed on too. Why even turn them off? I don't know. But if the blades up, you're not going to see them. Maybe I'll figure out how to get the thing headlights to turn on. Not the high beams, but just the. I don't know. But at least the halos for sure. At least the C rings. The C rings. How do those aren't working? When the plow's on, those don't work. But I think we can figure out how to get that. So comment below if you would like to see that. But anyway, this is DS Trucks. My name is Sean. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Over and out.